you can set up the most advanced, well laid out and interesting live stream setup in the world. But you have to fumble around with alt tabbing, clicking the wrong things and shuffling windows around to actually utilize your full scene setup. It's going to look pretty amateur. Thankfully, XSplit Broadcaster gives you a whole gamut of possibilities for controlling your stream and getting the most out of your broadcast experience. In this episode, we will cover managing hotkeys as well as additional control devices to never have to alt tab during a live stream ever again. Are you ready to take ultimate control over your live stream but you're not sure how? The Elgato Stream Deck is the key to unlocking your full potential. With your choice of 6, 15, or 32 keys, all with customizable screens behind them and unlimited possibilities to nest, make folders and pages to control your live stream with scene switching, muting your microphone, activating your Elgato key lights and setting up multi actions to do everything at once. Start your stream, turn on your lights, tweet your stream. You can do anything. You'd be a fool not to have this in your setup. You don't want to be a fool, do you? Check it out via the link below and tell them the stream professor sent you. I'm Aples Vox, and welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. In previous episodes, we introduced you to Broadcaster and got you set up with audio and video devices, your recording and streaming settings, and so on. Remember, all episodes in the course are available in the description below, so be sure to check that playlist if you have any questions. I probably already answered them. First, let's talk about hotkeys. Hotkeys are key combinations that you use to perform specific actions. In this case, controlling XSplit. With this, you'll be able to change scenes, mute your microphone or desktop sound, start or stop recording or streaming, and take screenshots, all without ever needing to alt tab from your game or focus program to broadcaster or using your mouse at all, really. It's one of the big boosts to production value that you can give your stream, and it's super easy once you know what you're doing. Uh, I'm gonna go to a scene that just doesn't have anything on it. Ho <laughs> ho ho ho! It's sick! It's sick! To set up hotkeys in Broadcaster, go to Tools, Settings. Click the Hotkeys tab. You have two different modes for hotkeys to operate when you go towards the bottom. Basic is a normal hotkey functionality that most people will use. Advanced enables MIDI control surfaces and devices, you know, control decks, and the ability to map individual non-modifier based keys, so keys without control, alt, shift, things like that, as hotkeys for setting up dedicated hotkey key keyboards and things like that. This is an advanced use case. We're going to stick with basic for this video. There's also a drop down for hotkey behavior. Generally, you want this on global. This means that hotkeys will always work no matter which program or window is in focus, such as your game. Application means that the hotkeys will only work if XSplit itself is in focus and are ignored if you have another window pulled up. Disabled, of course, just means that hotkey inputs won't work at all. All right, back to the top so we can actually set our hotkeys. You're presented with a big list of available actions to assign hotkeys to, as well as just a couple default hotkeys already present. These actions include scene switching, switching to scene presets, resizing sources, toggling sound devices, starting and stopping streaming and recording outputs, running ads on Twitch, inserting marking, markers into a recording, controlling NDI, and enabling the in-game overlay. Yeah, that's a thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Click the action you wish to modify. Below it pulls up a menu to build a hotkey combination from modifiers and available buttons. Or you can click the edit button to the left of the listing and type it in yourself. Click the X to clear a currently assigned hotkey. Manage and set these to your heart's content. Just be mindful of system based global hotkeys such as alt tab, alt f 4, things like that, or other global key combinations that may register to other programs and cause undesired behavior. If you want to go beyond this, there are two extensions available in the plugin store, something we'll cover more in the next episode in this course, one for macros and one for the Elgato Stream Deck. Feel free to download the ones you want and experiment with them. The macros plugin gets really, really advanced and allows you to set up automated sets of actions that can be triggered by basically any event. For example, an automated broadcast that interacts with web sources. Possible triggers include a scheduled time, it just does something at a scheduled time, a key press, a key switch, and media source stopping, so when it stops, something happens. Possible actions include changing the visibility of or playback state of sources, starting or stopping a broadcast, such as for automated streams starting at a certain time of day, or changing transitions or running another macro entirely. You can even build upon this with more advanced scripts using the XJS framework to use with this plugin. 
There is really no end to what this might be capable of, but it's honestly, I'm not a big scripting guy, so I can only really give you that much from here. The Elgato Stream Deck extension, on the other hand, lets you use the Stream Deck, which is a macro control pad with screens under the keys for custom icons and feedback states and things like that, to control most hotkey actions in XSplit Broadcasting. The XSplit integration ships built into the Elgato Stream Deck software, but you need to go on and install the Stream Deck extension to get it working within XSplit itself. It's super simple. Just click Install and you're good to go. Then open up the Stream Deck software, navigate to the XSplit section, and drag on your desired scene, source, output, device and record or stream start actions as normal. You can even add a screenshot with this as well. Here you can truly have control over your stream in the palm of your hands, or at least at your fingertips. If you're more of a custom scripting kind of person, don't forget to enable the advanced hotkey mode for MIDI support and go ham developing your own stream control surface. Next, let's talk about that sweet, sweet heads up display. Before we go any further, open up the settings and make sure enable in-game HUD is checked. The default hotkey for this over in the hotkey section is control tab. Go ahead and launch a game. You'll need this open to, you know, you'll need to be in the game to use the HUD. Once in the game, press your HUD or overlay hotkey, the default being control tab. This brings up a wonderful UI that only you can see, not your viewers, giving you some useful information about your stream and controls. This is perhaps a little less robust or deeply integrated as Gamecaster's overlay, but it's still very useful for those without dual monitors or who just want to be able to adjust settings while in game. More of your actual streaming specific settings will show up once you have begun streaming to your target destination. At the top is a button called Pinned Widgets. Click it. Here you can assign widgets from the previous menu. The difference here being that the pinned widgets will persist on top of your game screen while you're playing. Again, your viewers won't see it, only you. But with this, you can overlay information like, like chat and your stream status and things like that onto your gameplay so that you always see it while you're streaming, but your viewers don't have to look at it. Add or remove the widgets as you desire and position them how you like and adjust the transparency and stream away. This HUD tool combined with the hotkeys and to switch scenes and manage all the options means that everyone, be it a multi-monitor monster or a normal you know, person with only one single monitor or a laptop, has all the control you need to build an amazing live stream and control it for your viewers. Hit the like button and subscribe for more tech education. Be sure to check the playlist for more episodes of my XSplit Masterclass. Go subscribe on Floatplane where you can get early access to videos just like this and behind the scenes content. I'm Eupholz Fox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time.